Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer this Thursday, April 16th. I'm Mark Stevenson, Parish Deacon at Church of the Ascension. Good morning. My name is Kristen Priest. I'm a member at Ascension. Let's take a moment to quiet our hearts before we join in worship. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, Open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let's say together the Christ our Passover. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Hallelujah. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Our psalms appointed for today are Psalms 108 and 110. We will read them responsibly by half verse. O oh God, my heart is fixed. My heart is firmly fixed. I will sing and give praise with the best that I have. Awake, my soul, awake, lute and harp. I myself will awaken the dawn. I will give thanks unto you, O Lord, among the peoples. And I will sing praises unto you among the nations. For the greatness of your mercy reaches to the heavens. And your faithfulness to the clouds. Exalt yourself, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. That your beloved may be delivered. Save me by your right hand and answer me. God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice and divide Shechem and parcel out the valley of Sukkot. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the helmet for my head. Judah is my scepter. Moab is my washpot. Over Edom will I cast my shoe. Over Philistia will I triumph. 
Who will lead me into the strong city? And who will bring me into Edom? Have you not forsaken us, O God? And will you not, O God, go forth with our hosts? O help us against the enemy. For vain is the help of man. Through God we shall do great acts. For it is he who shall tread down our enemies. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit at my right hand. Until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the scepter of your power out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. In the day of your power, the people in holy raiment shall offer you free will offerings. From the womb of the morning, the dew of your youth belongs to you. The Lord has sworn and will not recant. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at your right hand shall smite kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge the nations. He shall fill the lands with dead bodies and strike down heads of many countries. He shall drink from the brook by the way. Therefore shall he lift up his head. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the book of Job, beginning with the 14th chapter, the first verse. Man who is born of a woman is few of days and full of trouble. He comes out like a flower and withers. He flees like a shadow and continues not. And do you open your eyes on such a one and bring me into judgment with you? Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? There is not one. Since his days are determined and the number of his months is with you, and you have appointed him, appointed his limits that he cannot pass, look away from him and leave him alone that he may enjoy, like a hired hand, his day. For there is hope for a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that its shoots will not cease. Though its root grow old in the earth, and its stump die in the soil, yet at the scent of water it will bud and pull out branches like a young plant. But a man dies and is laid low. Man breathes his last, and where is he? As waters fail from a lake, and a river wastes away and dries up, so a man lies down and rises not again. Till the heavens are no more, he will not awake or be roused out of his sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in Sheol, that you would conceal me until your wrath be past, that you would appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my service I would wait till my renewal should come. You would call and I would answer you. You would long for the work of your hands. For then you would number my steps. You would not keep watch over my sin. My transgression would be sealed up in a bag and you would cover over my iniquity. But the mountain falls and crumbles away and the rock is removed from its place. The waters wear away the stones. The torrents wash away the soil of the earth. So you destroy the hope of man. You prevail forever against him, and he passes. You change his countenance and send him away. His sons come to honor, and he does not know it. They are brought low, and he perceives it not. He feels only the pain of his own body, and he mourns only for himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together, let's say the song of Moses. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God, and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. The Lord is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. 
The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. You brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Epistle to the Hebrews, beginning with the fifth chapter, the eleventh verse. About this we have much to say, and it is hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you, again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God and of instruction about washings, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance, since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him up to content. For land that has drunk the rain that often falls on it and produces a crop useful for those whose sake it is cultivated receives a blessing from God. But if it bears thorns and thistles, it is worthless and near to being cursed, and its end is to be burned. Though we speak in this way, yet in your case, beloved, we feel sure of better things, things that belong to salvation. For God is not unjust so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saints, as you still do. And we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness, to have the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, surely I will bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham, having patiently waited, obtained the promise. For people swear by something greater than themselves, and in all their disputes an oath is final for confirmation. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath, so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain, where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some of us uh, experience a post-Easter slump. Spiritual disciplines begin to fall away, or just generally our spiritual energy flags, and 
The celebration of Pentecost seems a long way off. And that is in a traditional year. This Easter, of course, was so non-traditional, so unprecedented that any post-Easter slump is entangled in the still raw emotions of isolation, fear, and even despair caused by COVID-19. In the Sunday New York Times, there was a, an article entitled, How Should Christians Act During a Pandemic? The text of the article was set around a black box with the single word, hope, in small print, but standing out in bold white center. It was a helpful and hopeful article. One quote particularly stood out. It came from a pastor who had just guided her congregation through their first COVID-19 death. And she said, I feel like I'm handing out life jackets of hope in a sea of despair. Life jackets of hope in a sea of despair. It's a beautiful image. The main point of the article is that what, what should the Christian church be doing uh, to provide the best possible help and the ability to suffer with hope. Well, the source of that hope, and, and this is crucial here, is the driving force of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is the hope that we can carry with us today. It's the rock solid reality that Jesus Christ has died Jesus Christ is risen, and Jesus Christ will come again. There's so much in our world today, particularly today, that mitigates against this hope, that even actively works against it. Even the lectionary reading assigned for this morning from the book of Job doesn't seem to help at first, does it? Now, Job is a, is a rich and very complex teaching and has engaged lively debate and scholarship for centuries. Chapter 14 that we just heard deals with the difficult but prevalent issues of human suffering, the burden of death, and our human desire to understand death. Job is nearly consumed by the, this one question that he asks, and it was in chapter 14, verse 14, that we just heard it. And that question is this. Job asks, if a man dies, shall he live again? Well, this is the question, isn't it? And this morning, even in the midst of our Easter slump, we have the answer. And the answer is yes. Yes. In the words of the opening sentence from this morning, this morning uh, the morning prayer service from Colossians, it says, if then you have been raised with Christ, Seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. There's this tremendous hope that we have, and, and my prayer is that we can carry this hope with us as we leave this service. No matter what we do, we can keep that hope alive in the hearts of others. He's risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We'll respond by proclaiming the Gloria in Excelsis. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen.
let us profess our faith in the risen Jesus in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven. Heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, Guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers in righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, you show those in error the light of your truth so that they may turn to the path of righteousness. Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Holy Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so guide and govern us, govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, to the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. Most loving Father, you will us to give thanks for all things, to dread nothing but the loss of you, and to cast all our care on the one who cares for us. Preserve us from faithless fears and worldly anxieties, and grant that no clouds of this mortal life may hide us from the light of that love which is immortal, in which you have manifested unto us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love 
and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We wish you all a blessed day and carry that Easter hope with us 